This is a production of WTVI PBS Charlotte. The following episode of Charlotte Cooks is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to this edition of Charlotte Cooks. I'm glad you're here with me today. We're going to be making a really unique kind of chocolate cake and two kinds of frosting, and it's really a wonderful cake. It's delicious, and it's easy, it's simple, better than box, better than these complicated recipes. You're not gonna believe how easy it is. Come over here, let me show you how we're gonna get started. First of all, you're gonna need two bowls. You're gonna need a bowl for your dry ingredients and you're gonna need a bowl for your wet ingredients. And so the first thing we're going to do in our dry ingredient bowl is we are going to measure one and a half cups of whole wheat flour. And we're going to put the whole wheat flour, not regular flour, we want whole wheat flour, okay? So one and a half cups of whole wheat flour into the bowl. We're going to put three tablespoons of cocoa powder into the bowl. What kind of cocoa powder you choose can influence the degree of darkness of your chocolate cake, okay? So well, I like using the strongest, darkest cocoa that I can find. It can be called brute, but you can call it extra special dark, or you can just use the regular cocoa that you find in the grocery store. You are gonna see there's a difference in color in the resulting cake. Three tablespoons of cocoa powder. I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to use one teaspoon of baking soda. Now the baking soda is the key to this, okay? So you can't leave it out. Just regular old everyday baking soda. These are the dry ingredients. I'm gonna set these aside for right now. Now I'm gonna get my wet ingredients and I'm gonna mix those in a separate bowl. My wet ingredients are going to be things like maple syrup, we're going to use two-thirds of a cup of maple syrup, all right? So get your third measuring cup, two-thirds of a cup. This is a delicious addition to this cake. We're not adding any extra sugar. We're not adding any extra eggs or any butter or anything like that. Whole wheat flour, cocoa powder, maple syrup, ha, -ha two-thirds of a cup. There you go. We're going to put that down. And the next thing we're going to add is a half a cup of applesauce. Now you can get whatever kind of applesauce you like. Personally, I like the applesauce that's just straight up everyday apples, okay? One half cup of applesauce. Pour it into your measuring cup, mix it into your bowl with your maple syrup. You're also going to be adding three-fourths of a cup of straight up cold water. Just straight up cold water. Three-fourths of a cup. Okay, there you go. Mix that in. And here is the secret ingredient. What is gonna make this cake rise, okay? White vinegar. We're going to add a tablespoon of white vinegar. Plain old everyday white vinegar. Now, if you guys have ever been in grade school, which I think everybody's been in grade school at one point in time, and you had your science experiments where you combine the vinegar and the baking soda together, and you watch that big volcano thing happen, same thing's gonna happen here, okay? So when you're doing this, you're gonna take your whisk and you're gonna mix these things together just so they're nice and combined, okay? You're gonna mix your wet things together. And here's something else I'd like to add to this. I like to add a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla is a delicious addition. You don't have to add vanilla, but you can if you want to, about a teaspoon. Mix it in. Now here's the thing. When you combine these two together, you've got to be ready to go into the oven. Have your oven ready at 350 degrees. You're gonna take a simple cake pan. It can be a round one, it can be a square one. If you're gonna be using a square pan, make it a nine inch pan. This is about a nine inch round pan. Make sure you spray it really well. Because you want that cake to pop out when it's done. And here's something else, guys, if you wanted to make Cupcakes out of this. The cupcakes makes 24 mini cupcakes, 12 big cupcakes. It works really well. All right, here's the magic. We're going to take our wet, we're going to put it into our dry. First thing you're going to notice is it's going to start bubbling and foaming. 
That's the vinegar and the baking soda reaction, okay? So we're going to mix it all together. Just mix it all up until it's all mixed up. Your oven's preheated to 350 degrees. So as soon as you pop this into your cake pan, it goes into the oven, or you scoop it into your muffin tins. As soon as you're done, I mean, don't go answer the phone, don't go chase the dog, don't go bathe the children or anything like that. As soon as you get this mixed together, pop it into your pan, okay? Here's your pan. Just drop it right on in there. You can see it's already foaming a little bit just as we're doing this, okay? Oh, it smells lovely. It smells also chocolatey. You don't even notice the vinegar. You don't even notice anything but chocolate. Okay, put that in there. Get rid of your bowl. You're going to tap it just a few minutes to make it even. And that is all there is to making this cake. You don't have to use a mixer. You don't have to use eggs or butter. You don't have to make cream your butter and your um, whatever it is you're making your cake with. Just this, put it in the oven. Here we go. 350 degrees for 30 minutes. In 30 minutes, it's gonna rise, it's gonna come out, and you're gonna turn it out of the pan right away. And then you're gonna let it cool, and we're gonna make some frostings, okay? You ready? Here is what we're gonna use for frostings. I'm gonna make two kinds of frosting today. One is gonna be for the inside of the cake, and the other one is gonna be for the outside of the cake. And you'll see why you're making two different frostings in just a moment, okay? So for the first one, we're going to be using silk and tofu. Surprise, okay? Silk and tofu is one of those things that tastes like whatever you put it in, it doesn't really have a flavor. But the silk and tofu is the one that's the softest, that falls apart. It's the one you use in smoothies, use it in sauces. If you, if you didn't want to have a firm tofu, this is what you would choose. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up your tofu package and you're going to drain it because there's a little bit of water in there. And you're going to drop this whole package. Let me take this off of here. I'm going to drop this whole package into the bowl of a mixer. Now you can use a blender, you can use a food processor, you can use um, some kind of a you know, mixing apparatus. You can even do it by hand, but I find using it on a mixer makes it really nicely textured. So the other thing that you're going to do while you're getting your tofu drained is you are going to go ahead and take three quarters of a cup of chocolate chips. You can use the dark ones, you can use the light ones. And once they are fully melted, I just put them in a bowl over a double boiler, and they're fully melted now. And the way you tell chocolate chips, as you can tell, the chocolate will hold its shape as it's melted until it's moved around, okay? So you can't look at it and say, oh, it's all melted because it's all, you know, lost its shape. Chocolate won't lose its shape until you move it after it's melted. So one thing you want to look for is you want to make sure that you've got your chocolate all nice and smooth. And that really could use a little bit more on this double boiler, so let me just leave this for a minute and I'm gonna start loosening up my tofu while I'm waiting for that. Okay, I'm gonna just turn that on a little bit. Remember guys, when you're using your double boiler, you can use just a simple pot full of water with a bowl that fits on top. That's all you really need, okay? So I'm gonna put my tofu in here. I'm gonna turn this on just to start breaking it up. We're also going to be adding a little bit of vanilla and a pinch of salt. Why do I add salt to this? because vanilla always comes forward when you add salt, okay? So add a little bit of vanilla to that. It's not necessarily for vanilla flavor, it's mostly to enhance the flavor of the chocolate and the frosting. And I think we've just maybe another minute or two on this. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt to the vanilla. Just a pinch, not much, because we don't want it to be salty. We just want to enhance the flavor. Okay. So once the, now you can melt your chocolate chips in the microwave if you wanted to. I just don't have a microwave here on the set, so and I, I try not to use a microwave anyway. Well, our chocolate is nice and melted now. It's all nice and smooth. So we've got three quarters of a cup of chocolate chips melted in here, okay? So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it over here and we're going to put it into our bowl, our mixing bowl with our tofu. Okay, now remember guys, this bowl is hot, so don't grab it with your bare hand. Just get it in there, and you're going to turn it on and whip it up good, okay? And just let that whip together, get rid of this. To this, we're going to add a little bit of vanilla.
and then put it on high and let it whip, okay? Now, this is going to be a very soft frosting, all right? So I've added a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of salt. I've got my silken tofu and my melted chocolate in here. Put the speed up on high and let it go until it's completely smooth. It may take a minute or two. This is what it's going to look like when it's all done. Now, this is the filling frosting. If you were to do this cake mix as a, like a sheet cake, if you put it in like a nine by nine square pan and you didn't want to do a layer cake, pardon me, then you could certainly just do like a sheet cake and use this as your top frosting. There it is. Look at that. Now, it's not a tight frosting. That's why we don't use it on the outside of a cake because it doesn't hold up. But I'm going to show you how to make a nice tight frosting with another vegetable. What vegetable am I going to use for this one? Ha! Avocados. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm going to take an avocado and I'm going to cut it in half. Now you guys have to realize avocados have pits in the middle, so you're not going to like toom, slice it all the way through. Just put your knife in until you feel resistance, okay? And then just circle the avocado around. Circle this out. Take a spoon. And we're going to use a food processor for this, okay? We're going to put our avocados in here. Now for this recipe, you're going to use three avocados. This is how you take the pit out of the avocado. Take your knife and put it in there and pull it out. So you're going to take your avocado, you're going to take a spoon, and you're going to scoop it out so you get the whole thing out. Put it in your Roboku. Now, here's a couple things that we need to add to this. We're going to add a little bit more cocoa powder. We're going to add about a half a cup of cocoa powder. All right? So I'm going to grab a half a cup. I'm going to scoop cocoa powder into here. Now we're going to add 10x sugar to this. I'm just going to add all this cocoa powder. There we go. I've got some 10x sugar over here. This is 10x sugar. It's also called confectioner sugar. I like using confectioner sugar in this recipe because it doesn't have the um, graininess that regular granulated sugar does. You want the sugar to melt, okay? And so we add this, we add about a half a cup to this process here. We are going to add a little bit of almond milk. And the almond milk is just to help make it all come together. So you don't have to use a whole lot of it. Now, if you didn't want to use almond milk, you can certainly use cashew milk, one or the other. I might need a little bit more of that. You're going to put this onto your machine and let it process. Once again, you want it to process until it's completely smooth. And as it's processing here, we can add our vanilla and a little bit of salt to it as well. Okay. I'm going to have to pulse this just to get these avocados chopped up. Now this will take probably about five minutes of processing to get it completely smooth. Now you can serve this also as a pudding instead of just as a frosting. It's really wonderful. It's amazing. It's, it's the creamiest chocolate pudding you've ever had. And it's made out of avocados and almond milk and a little bit of sugar and a little bit of cocoa powder. You would never know. You don't taste the avocado. You don't see the avocado. You'll have to check this out in just a minute. Because this is amazing stuff. I love this stuff. Did you know that there are many different kinds of peppercorns? Typically, when people are filling their pepper grinders at home, all they're using are the nice black peppercorns and the black peppercorns in themselves come in a lot of varieties but I want to tell you a little bit about some spice you can add to your life with some different kind of peppercorns. You can buy the peppercorn blend already done. It has the pink peppercorns, white peppercorns and some green ones in there. However, I want to show you a couple of other things. You can go out and you can buy your containers of your peppercorns. These are the air dried green peppercorns. They add a lovely flavor. We have the white peppercorns that seem to be a little bit more spicy or hotter than the black peppercorns. We have a pink peppercorn that's really not a peppercorn at all, but it's a great thing to add for a little bit of color or a little bit of splash. It adds a nice flavor. Um, not a whole lot of flavor. It's mostly there for visual variety. 
We also have a fabulous Szechuan peppercorn. The Szechuan peppercorns are a type of a berry and they're spicy and they're hot and they're, they're just delightful. And then there's something else I like to add to my pepper grinder is some cloves. And so what I do is I take my pepper grinder whenever it needs to be refilled and I add a lovely assortment of all of them. I'll put pink in there and how do I judge how much I'm putting in? visual. I'd like to have a nice variety so we have a nice combination of all of these peppercorns in my pepper grinder. Don't go so heavy on the Szechuan and make a you know good amount of the black. Two or three cloves are really all you need inside of the pepper grinder. Don't forget your green ones and you can always top it all off with some of your peppercorn blend that you've already purchased. When you get your peppercorn grinder all mixed up, shake it up and grind away. Going to be able to get some beautiful, beautiful seasonings with this. Just grind it away and you have all the colors coming out and wonderful flavors. You can also add whole allspice berries if you'd like. Just gives that whole shake of a pepper just a whole new dimension. This has been processing for a few minutes now and I'm looking at it and I see it's rather thick so I'm going to add a little bit more almond milk and then I'll add vanilla and salt and finish off the mixing. I use about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of um, vanilla. And once again, just a pinch of salt, vanilla's friend. And there we go. That is all that we need to make this pudding. Let me show you what it looks like. It's a pudding slash frosting. Well, look at that. Look at how nice and rich and thick that is. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. And you would never even think that this was avocados. You put this in a dish and you put it out as chocolate pudding, your kids would be scarfing up avocados like crazy. So consider that. All right, so I'm going to show you how these cakes get frosted. It's very easy to do. If you just wanted to do a simple like sheet cake and you serve it in a 9 by 9 square pan, you could just put the frosting right on top. You don't have to separate them out like a layer cake. But I had some wonderful, talented students helping me this time, and they were able to frost this cake. And I want to show you what it looks like on the inside. Outside, we have the avocado chocolate pudding. We also have a caramel sauce. Now everything in this cake, and I didn't want to say this at the beginning, is totally vegan. There's no eggs, no butter, no dairy in this cake at all. And so I want to show you what it looks like inside, okay? And then I'm going to show you how we do this lovely design on top. So you're going to take your, and it just is, who says you have to be vegan and you can't have cake anymore? I mean, really? I mean, that's like, oh, no. Everybody needs cake, especially on their birthday. Look at that. Now you see, you can see the different colors inside of here. And the different colors inside of here are all because of the different kinds of cocoa that were used. We used a darker cocoa, we used a lighter cocoa, and in between your layers we put a seedless raspberry jam. So we've got chocolate and raspberry and caramel. It's just amazing. So I'm going to show you how we're going to make this design on top. Okay, so I'm going to put our lovely little cake away. It's nice. It's moist, it's delicious, and there's no reason you ever have to tell anybody this was a vegetarian or a vegan cake. No reason whatsoever. Don't even mention it. So for the caramel sauce, this is a really simple way of making caramel sauce. Once again, you're going to use your food processor. Since this one has chocolate avocado pudding in it, I'm going to put this one away. We're going to use the bowl of a food processor, and you're going to add now you can use a Vitamix, you can use a good strong blender for this if you wanted. You're going to add 12 dates. Now dates have pits inside of them. So you want to make sure that you pull the pits out. You split the date in half, squish it with your fingers, and you find that little seed that's in the middle. Now sometimes the seeds in the middle are very, very tiny. But nonetheless, there's a seed in there. Get it out because you don't want those in your lovely caramel, caramel sauce. Okay? So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that one had a pit in it. No, nope. this one has a pit in it. Yep. Okay. Eleven, twelve. All right. Twelve. Twelve dates. 
we're going to take a third of a cup of maple syrup. Once again, I'm just going to estimate it. Maple syrup, half a cup of maple syrup. I said a third, but I just remembered it's a half a cup of maple syrup. It's a half a cup of almond milk, cashew milk, whatever it is you might have, okay? Now here is something else, a half a cup of cashews. Now these cashews have been soaked overnight in water, and that, what that does is it activates a lot of growth enzymes within the cashew, which makes it extremely healthy, but it also makes them really soft, which allows them to puree and become almost cream-like. Um, you can actually make cashew milk, and cashew milk can be made nice and thick and use it just like cream. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing what the plant world does. I'm going to add a little pinch of salt to this. I'm going to turn this on and process it. It's chunky because there's dates. And all you do is process until it's smooth, and when it's done, it comes out nice and smooth, looking like this. Look at that. Now I put that into a piping bag so I can pipe it and show you how to make that design. Okay, now you don't have to put it in a piping bag. You can put it in a bowl and eat it. It's so good. So what you're going to do here is all you're going to do is you're just going to pipe some lines across the surface of your cake. Just some straight lines. Put them together close if you want. I'm going to put them a little closer together. And all the way across. And then you're going to choose like a toothpick or a skewer. You can use a tip of a knife. And all you're going to do from here is just go forward like this and backward like this. Forward and backward and forward. Try to go in a straight line and backward. I'm not doing very good on my straight lines. And back like this. And it gives you that really neat little chevron design on the top. And you look like a professional cake decorator. Look at that. Waha! Isn't that easy to do? So here we have, this is how you can make the caramel sauce. This is how you can pipe it on the top of your, your cake. You can take it and make lovely little cupcakes. Look at these things. Aren't they fun? Look at that, all these little different designs. When you put your um, frosting or your icing into a uh, piping bag, choose your star tips and choose different shapes of star tips so you can get different designs. As you can see, we've got a lot of fun going on here. These are the little cupcakes. We've got 24 little cupcakes out of that one batch. Um, one of these layer cakes should have to make two batches so you can get two layers. Um, separate those layers. As you can see, the layers are really lovely. And um, if you use different cocos, you can get different chocolate flavors as well. Um, this is what the chocolate avocado pudding looks like. You can take this out and put that in a bowl and serve that with a bunch of berries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, strawberries. It's delicious all by itself. You can use it as a frosting for cupcakes or cakes like this. This is a wonderful vegan opportunity to have your cake and eat it too. You can put birthday candles in it, sing happy birthday, and still have a very nutritious, instead of a a horrible diet destroying cake, you can still have it. Thank you for watching this episode of Charlotte Cooks. I'm Chef Pamela Roberts. If you're looking for our recipes, look at pbscharlotte.org or you can email me at pamela.roberts at cpcc.edu. Thanks for watching this episode and we'll see you again. Bye bye. Production of WTBI PBS Charlotte.